Okay, that time it didn't do it because I drove into the garage. But on start, this has a distinct rattle for about a second uh, when it's been sitting for a, a day or so. Uh, and I believe it's these, which are the chain tensioners. Now there's three on the car and they just tension the chain and they, they tension with oil pressure. And when they get old, they have a tendency to start leaking. The other things that leak down are the lifters and that's a much bigger job. So I'm hedging my bets that it's these. Uh, so we're gonna replace the bottom two. The reason for replacing the bottom two is because the ones that are facing, well one's facing like this and one's facing like that and then the top ones at the top facing down. That one tends not to leak, this one tends to be the worst and this one also is not great. So I'm gonna replace these, hope it's not the lifters because if it's the lifters that is a big job and I mean to be honest it's probably an engine out job. Now Porsche have redesigned these at least once or twice. Uh, making them stiffer, slightly longer, uh, because this is an issue. Now, what's the so what's the problem if you just leave the rattle? Because it's only for a second. What's the big deal, right? Well, these tension a plastic guide, chain guide, and if they don't have pressure, they're slack in the chain. Worst case, you skip a tooth, blows the engine. The uh, more common case is you start destroying the chain guard because it's only plastic and you've got a metal chain slapping against it before this tightens up and tensions it. Uh, and then you'll start seeing little bits of plastic in your, in your oil filter uh, and then you're going to have to change them anyway because your chain will probably slip or something. And you don't want bits of plastic floating around in your engine, who knows what kind of damage it could cause. So, if you start hearing that, which you probably were if you have an old Boxster, uh, this or the lifters is going to be your culprit. Now to do these, you want to lock the engine top dead center and you want to lock the cams. Now along with putting it in top dead center, which we've done, The other thing to do is lock the cams. Now, this is definitely more important if you've got a three chain motor, which is 2002, three onwards, or late 2002, I believe. Mine's a five chain, so way less likely to skip. However, I'm still gonna make some of these. Now, this is a template of a, a five chain cam lock, which I took when I rented the tools when I did the IMS bearing. Um, so I'm just gonna, essentially make one out of this bit of steel that I have here. It's cold now. Oh shit, no, it's still hot. Woo! So it's not gonna be perfect, and uh, it should be three and a half mil. This is only two and a half mil, but it's better than nothing. All right, it's definitely not perfect. Very close to the edge, not strong, but it will lock the cam, I believe. Once it's in top dead center and you've locked the cam, you can go ahead and remove the first tensioner. Now here's the old, here you can see it's the greasy one. And here's the new, look, there's not many differences. There's one hole, one hole at the bottom. But the main difference, can you see that? This one's definitely a lot higher. Now before you put the new 
tension it in. What you want to do, plonk it in there. Well, actually, what you want to do is fill this with oil. You want to immerse it, and you want to pump it. You want to start again. Oh, oh, look at that! Wow. Okay, this is a good sign. Jesus, that's I can't even press it. That's incredible. Because the old one did not do that. Yeah, the valve on that one. No, I can't even press that. How am I going to get that back on? Jesus. Alright, this is going to be interesting. Now I didn't drain the sump, which was silly. However, even if you do, some oil will still come out when you take the tensions out, so just be aware. Have a bucket ready. So we have the old and the new. Again, slight differences, slightly taller. Now, this one has one hole at the bottom, along with this one. But this one seems to have Cross drilled through it here. And this one doesn't, it just has this. So, again, slightly different. We'll see, uh, we'll see if this makes any difference. Also, a little bit, when I took this one out, a tiny bit of plastic came out. And I am sure, I was assuming it's plastic or some sort of debris. It wasn't magnetic, I tried it. Um, and I'm assuming, and I've lost it now, is I'm assuming it was the chain guard. So it does appear that the chain guard is disintegrating, which is not the news I wanted. Okay, we've got oil in the car. We've put a serpentine belt back on taken it off top dead center. We've done a few rotations to make sure that uh, there's no resistance. So, you know, we're pretty sure that we're not skipping a tooth, which is good. So we're pretty sure we're not skipping a tooth. I've taken the cam lock off, put the little green, whatever they're called, back in. Little green plugs back in. Um, these are tight. Both of these are done up nicely. So the next stage is, here we have the fuse box. Now C4 is the fuel pump. And we're gonna take that out. So we're gonna crank it, get some oil pressure, make sure those chain tensioners fill up with oil before we try and start the car. Okay, C4's back in. Now, unfortunately, this did not fix my issue. It did help a little bit, but there's still a chain rattle. What I discovered is if the chain guards, which the chain tensioners push up against, have worn out, that's enough to cause the rattle. So, engine does appear that it will be coming out and I will be changing at least some of the chain guards. Catch that on another episode. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.